Hi, I'm Devra Davis from Pittsburgh's Center for Environmental Oncology. Uh, now I'd like to talk with you about uh, a problem that many people don't even know is a problem, our use of cell phones. Cell phones save lives, and they've changed the way we live. They've changed the nature of personal relationships. There's no question about it. You can't be hiding from somebody now unless you turn off your phone. It turns out turning off your phone is not a bad idea. In fact, an international group of scientists recently issued an advisory. They say children should not use cell phones except in emergencies. You know how your ear gets warm when you use a phone? You know how there was that video on YouTube about cell phones being able to pop popcorn? It turned out to be a fraud, but people believed it. That's because they know that a phone can heat up your ear. You have to ask yourself, if it's heating up your ear, what's it doing to your brain? Well, we have MRI images that we've taken of the heads of children, and we can model the amount of penetration in the brain from a cell signal, which is, after all, microwaves. You wouldn't microwave your head, would you? Why would you be microwaving the brain of a five-year-old or even a ten-year-old? It turns out that children's brains are, in fact, less thick than ours. Well, I cannot tell you that cell phones are dangerous, but I also can't tell you that they're safe. And what I know is that a group of eminent scientists have reviewed the literature and they're still fighting about who should be in charge of releasing the report, but here's what they found. People who use cell phones for 10 years or more have double the risk of brain cancer compared to those who have not used cell phones. Now, we've used cell phones in this country a lot, but we've changed our patterns, so we can't really be sure whether or not a cell phone is increasing our risk of brain cancer yet. We will be sure in another 20 or 30 years. Is that a risk you want to take? Would you let your child play Russian roulette with a loaded gun? I don't think so. But I'm not going to tell you not to use cell phones. Here's what I am going to say. When you use a cell phone, you should not have it on on your body all the time. You should keep it, if it is on on your body, pointed away so that the signal doesn't come directly in contact with you as closely. You should use it with an earpiece, if possible, like this one with a hollowed tube. or you can use a Bluetooth accessory, which steps down the signal. When you're in areas where the cell signal is weak, try to avoid using the phone because it's pumping more of a microwave signal into the phone to get to you. If you read the manual, if you read the manual for the cell phone, it says keep it an inch away from the head. Very few people do that. The further away the phone is from your body, the lower the signal is that gets into your body. Wherever possible, try to limit your calls Text messaging is simpler and less, much less exposure than talking on a phone. And we need to ask ourselves with respect to the teenagers and subteens that are using these phones today, do we really want to treat them like lab rats in an experiment where we have no controls? I think it's a good idea to take prudent precautions. And while we continue to redesign these phones to reduce the amount of radiation they are emitting, it makes a great deal of sense to be safe rather than sorry. Thank you. I'm Deborah Davis.